In the glimmering world of Hollywood, where the silver screen casts its spell over millions, there exists a darker tale. A tale that doesn't make it to the headlines, but circulates in hushed whispers among those who walk the red carpets and those who merely dream of it. This is not a story of glamour or the American dream realized. It's a story of the 17 biggest jerks of Hollywood's golden era. These are the actors and actresses who, despite their undeniable talent and fame, had a knack for making life difficult for those around them. As you delve into these chapters, you'll find that each actor's story is a world unto itself, a world filled with ego, betrayal, and sometimes outright cruelty. But why focus on the negative, you might ask? Because it's often in the shadows that we find the most truth. These stories serve as cautionary tales, a behind-the-scenes look at what happens when fame, money, and unchecked ego collide. So let's pull back the curtain and take a closer look. Our first chapter will introduce you to a man who was as famous for his on-screen charm as he was infamous for his off-screen antics. A man whose smile could light up a room but whose temperament could just as easily darken it. Are you intrigued? Good. Clark Gable was a king on screen, but was he a tyrant behind the scenes? The man who made hearts flutter as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind had a charisma that was undeniable. His square jaw, twinkling eyes, and that iconic mustache made him the epitome of Hollywood masculinity. But off screen, the king of Hollywood had a reputation that was less than regal. Gable was known for his womanizing ways, a trait that led to multiple marriages and affairs. His relationship with Carol Lombard was the stuff of legends, but even that had its rocky moments. Lombard, known for her spunky personality, was one of the few who could handle Gable's strong character, but she wasn't the first or last to be charmed and subsequently hurt by him. His co-stars often had mixed feelings about working with him. Vivian Lee, who played Scarlett O'Hara opposite Gable's Rhett Butler, found him irresistible but also incredibly intimidating. He had a way of owning the room, and while that worked wonders on screen, it could make for a tense atmosphere behind the scenes. Gable was also known for his lack of patience with directors and crew members. His ego was as big as his talent, and he wasn't afraid to let people know when he was displeased. This led to several on-set conflicts, most notably with director Victor Fleming during the filming of Gone with the Wind. Gable's temper was infamous, and it wasn't uncommon for him to storm off set if things didn't go his way. But despite his flaws, Gable had a magnetic allure that couldn't be ignored. He was a complicated man, full of contradictions. He could be incredibly charming one moment and infuriating the next. Yet... It was this complexity that made him human and, in a strange way, even more captivating. So, was Clark Gable a king or a tyrant? Perhaps he was a bit of both. But one thing is certain. His legacy, as one of Hollywood's greatest actors, is indisputable, even if the man behind the legend was far from perfect. Joan Crawford Born Lucille Fay Lesseur was a Hollywood icon whose career spanned decades from the silent era to the golden age of cinema. She won an Academy Award for her role in Mildred Pierce and was known for her beauty, talent, and ambition. However, her legacy is also marred by the infamous portrayal of her as a cruel and abusive mother in the memoir Mommy Dearest, written by her adopted daughter Christina Crawford. The book, published in 1978, painted a disturbing picture of Crawford as a controlling, alcoholic mother who emotionally and physically abused her children. The memoir was later adapted into a film starring Faye Dunaway, further cementing this negative image of Crawford in the public's mind. Scenes like the No Wire Hangers episode became cultural touchstones, often overshadowing Crawford's cinematic achievements. Christina Crawford's account has been both supported and disputed. Some of Crawford's friends and colleagues, like actress Myrna Loy, defended her, stating that they never witnessed any abusive behavior. However, others, like actor Cliff Robertson, claimed that Crawford had a Jekyll and Hyde personality capable of both kindness and cruelty. Crawford's relationship with her other children was also complicated. Her adopted son, Christopher, corroborated Christina's accounts of abuse, while her twin daughters, Kathy and Cindy, defended their mother, stating they never experienced any mistreatment. The actress herself was a product of a difficult upbringing, born to a teenage mother and an absent father. 
She was sexually abused by her stepfather and worked menial jobs before making it in Hollywood. Some speculate that her own traumas may have influenced her parenting style. Despite the controversies, Crawford's contributions to film cannot be denied. She was a founding member of the Screen Actors Guild and was known for her philanthropic efforts, including donations to educational institutions and hospitals. In the end, Joan Crawford remains an enigmatic figure. Her life was a blend of triumphs and tragedies, and she was both a victim and, allegedly, a perpetrator. The question remains, was Joan Crawford the monster that Mommy Dearest portrayed her to be, or was she a complex woman shaped by the highs and lows of an extraordinary life? Bette Davis The two-time Academy Award-winning actress was known for her strong, independent roles and her equally strong personality. Her eyes were the subject of a hit song, and her acting prowess was the stuff of legend. However, Davis was not without her flaws, and her reputation for being difficult to work with was well known in Hollywood circles. Davis had a penchant for speaking her mind, regardless of the consequences. While this forthrightness was often celebrated, it also made her many enemies. She was notorious for her feuds with studio executives, directors, and co-stars. Her most famous feud was with Joan Crawford, her co-star in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. The animosity between the two was so intense that it became the stuff of Hollywood legend. Davis once quipped about Crawford, she slept with every male star at MGM except Lassie. Her sharp tongue wasn't reserved for just her enemies. Even her friends and family were not immune. Davis was married four times and each marriage ended in divorce. Her relationship with her daughter, B.D. Hyman, was so strained that Hyman wrote a scathing memoir about her mother, describing Davis as controlling and emotionally abusive. Davis was also known for her diva-like behavior on set. She had specific demands about lighting to showcase her famous eyes, and often clashed with directors who didn't meet her standards. During the filming of All About Eve, it was rumored that she had a contentious relationship with her co-star, Anne Baxter, and was not above scene-stealing to ensure she remained the center of attention. Moreover, Davis had a reputation for being a career-first woman, often at the expense of her personal relationships. Her ambition led her to take roles that others turned down and to work with people she despised. While this drive made her a star, it also made her isolated, as many in the industry found her too challenging to deal with. While Bette Davis is undoubtedly one of the greatest actresses in the history of cinema, her off-screen persona was far more complicated. Her wit and intelligence, so captivating on screen, could turn cutting and cruel in real life. She was a woman who defied conventions and broke barriers, but in doing so, she left a trail of broken relationships and bruised egos. Humphrey Bogart the man who gave us iconic roles like Rick Blaine in Casablanca and Sam Spade in The Maltese Falcon was as tough off-screen as he was in his films. However, this toughness sometimes manifested as outright rudeness and a lack of consideration for others. Bogart was known for his heavy drinking, a habit that often led to unpredictable and aggressive behavior. During a party at Frank Sinatra's house, a drunken Bogart reportedly became belligerent, insulting several guests and causing a scene. Sinatra had to intervene and escort him out, damaging their friendship for a time. His relationship with his third wife, Mayo Method, was notoriously volatile. Fueled by both parties' alcoholism, the couple was known in Hollywood circles as the battling Bogarts due to their frequent public fights. On one occasion, Bogart even threw Method off a boat into the water during an argument, an act that was both dangerous and humiliating for her. Bogart also had a contentious relationship with the press. He was known to be curt and dismissive with reporters, often giving sarcastic and cutting responses to their questions. During a press conference for In a Lonely Place, he berated a reporter for asking what he considered to be a stupid question, causing an awkward tension in the room. Even his friendships were not immune to his abrasive behavior. Despite a close friendship with Casablanca co-star Claude Rains, Bogart once publicly embarrassed him during a dinner party by making fun of Rains' English accent and theatrical mannerisms, leaving Rains visibly upset. 
Furthermore, Bogart was not above using his star power to belittle others. During the filming of Key Largo, he clashed with director John Huston over creative differences. Bogart, unhappy with Huston's direction, openly criticized him in front of the crew, undermining Huston's authority on his own set. Judy Garland the star of The Wizard of Oz is often remembered for her angelic voice and tragic life story. However, like many stars, Garland had moments where she was far from the darling the public adored. Her life was a roller coaster of ups and downs, and during the lows, she was known to lash out at those around her. Garland's tumultuous relationship with her mother, Ethel Gum, was well documented. Ethel was a stage mother who pushed Garland into the limelight at a young age, However, Garland often blamed her mother for her own struggles with addiction and mental health, going so far as to publicly call her a monster in interviews. While Ethel was far from perfect, Garland's public vilification of her added fuel to an already complicated relationship. On set, Garland could be equally difficult. During the filming of A Star is Born, she was frequently late, causing delays that cost the production thousands of dollars. Her behavior was often erratic due to her dependence on prescription medication, leading to mood swings that made her difficult to work with. She was known to snap at crew members and even threw a cup of coffee at director George Cukor in a fit of rage. Her marriages were also fraught with tension. Garland's third husband, Sid Luft, claimed that she tried to attack him with a kitchen knife during an argument. While Luft was no saint himself, this incident showed a volatile side to Garland that the public rarely saw. Garland's relationship with her children was complicated as well. Lorna Luft, her daughter, wrote in her memoir that Garland could be emotionally manipulative. She would often pit her children against each other and against their fathers, using them as pawns in her own emotional games. Even her friendships were not immune to her darker tendencies. Garland had a falling out with several close friends, including Frank Sinatra, whom she accused of exploiting her vulnerabilities for his own gain. Whether this was true or not, it showed a tendency to burn bridges and alienate those who cared for her. John Wayne, the iconic American actor known for his roles in westerns, is often seen as a symbol of rugged individualism and moral clarity. However, Wayne's off-screen persona was not always as admirable as the characters he portrayed. His public and private actions revealed a man who could be insensitive, prejudiced, and downright rude. One of the most glaring examples of Wayne's less-than-heroic behavior was his stance on race and civil rights. In a 1971 interview with Playboy magazine, Wayne made a series of racially insensitive comments, including stating that he believed in white supremacy. These comments were not only shocking, but also revealed a deep-seated prejudice that was hard to reconcile with his public image. Wayne's relationships with women were also problematic. Despite being married three times, he was known to be a serial philanderer. His affairs were not just a breach of trust, but also a form of emotional manipulation, as he would often pit women against each other, reveling in the drama it caused. On set, Wayne was known for his authoritarian tendencies. He often clashed with directors and co-stars who did not share his political views or who questioned his authority. During the filming of The Green Berets, Wayne's strong support for the Vietnam War created tension on set. He was dismissive of anyone who opposed the war, labeling them as unpatriotic, and this extended to his interactions with crew members, some of whom were drafted to fight in Vietnam. His relationship with his children was also complex. Ethan Wayne, his son, revealed in interviews that while Wayne was a loving father, he was also a strict disciplinarian who did not tolerate dissent. This authoritarian approach to parenting often led to strained relationships with his children, especially as they grew older and developed their own views. Wayne's friendships were not immune to his abrasive behavior. He had a long-standing friendship with actor Ward Bond, but the friendship ended abruptly when Bond expressed support for the civil rights movement. Wayne saw this as a betrayal and cut off all contact with Bond despite years of close friendship. Marlene Dietrich The German-American actress and singer was a symbol of elegance, beauty, and sexual ambiguity. Her roles in films like The Blue Angel and Morocco made her an international star. However, behind the scenes, 
Dietrich had a reputation for being difficult to work with and was known for her sharp tongue and dismissive attitude. One of the most talked about aspects of Dietrich's life was her numerous affairs, both with men and women. While her open sexuality was revolutionary for the time, the way she conducted her relationships was often less than admirable. She had affairs with co-stars, directors, and even military officers during W142, often regardless of their marital status. This cavalier attitude towards relationships often led to broken homes and strained friendships. Dietrich was also known for her diva-like behavior on set. She was extremely particular about lighting and camera angles, often clashing with directors and cinematographers to get her way. While some saw this as a sign of her commitment to her craft, others viewed it as egotistical and self-centered. Her demands were not limited to her professional life. She was known to be equally demanding in her personal relationships, often requiring extravagant gifts and constant attention. Her relationship with her daughter, Maria Riva, was fraught with tension. Dietrich was often absent, both emotionally and physically, as she prioritized her career over her family. Maria wrote in her memoir that her mother was manipulative and controlling, often using emotional blackmail to get her way. This strained relationship was indicative of Dietrich's general approach to personal relationships, which often took a back seat to her career and desires. In her later years, Dietrich became increasingly isolated. Her diva-like behavior had burned many bridges in Hollywood, and her waning popularity made her even more difficult to work with. She spent the last decade of her life in seclusion in Paris, rarely seen in public, and refusing most interviews. This self-imposed exile was perhaps the ultimate expression of her complex personality, a blend of glamour and vulnerability, kindness and cruelty. Ava Gardner The sultry Hollywood starlet was the epitome of beauty and grace on screen. However, behind the scenes, she had a reputation for being difficult to work with and had a penchant for stirring up drama. While her talent was undeniable, her behavior often left much to be desired. One of the most talked about incidents was her tumultuous relationship with Frank Sinatra. While Sinatra was head over heels for Gardner, she seemed to relish the power she had over him. She was known to be openly flirtatious with other men, just to get a rise out of Sinatra. This emotional manipulation took a toll on Sinatra, affecting both his personal life and career. Gardner was also notorious for her diva-like behavior on set. She had a habit of showing up late, keeping entire productions waiting, and then acting as if nothing was wrong. Her lack of professionalism didn't end there. She was known to be rude to crew members and even fellow actors. During the filming of The Sun Also Rises, she reportedly clashed with Ernest Hemingway, who was not pleased with her interpretation of his character, Lady Brett Ashley. Gardner dismissed his concerns, stating that she knew better how to portray a woman. Her love for alcohol was no secret, and it often exacerbated her erratic behavior. She was known to throw fits when things didn't go her way, and her mood could switch from charming to irate in a matter of seconds. This volatility made her unpredictable, adding stress to an already high-pressure environment. While Ava Gardner's on-screen presence captivated millions, those who knew her personally were often subjected to her less-than-stellar behavior. Her actions serve as a reminder that sometimes the most beautiful faces can hide the most complicated personalities. Vivian Lee Best, known for her iconic roles in Gone with the Wind and A Streetcar Named Desire, was a force to be reckoned with on screen. However, off screen, she was often a challenging person to deal with. Her beauty and talent were undeniable, but they came with a side of arrogance and a sharp tongue that could cut like a knife. Lee was known for her intense dedication to her craft, but this often translated into a demanding and sometimes cruel demeanor on set. She was notorious for insisting on multiple takes, even when everyone else was satisfied, pushing her co-stars and crew to the brink of exhaustion. Her perfectionism often crossed the line into outright rudeness. Her relationship with Laurence Olivier, one of the greatest actors of his time, was tumultuous at best. While their love story is often romanticized, the reality was far from perfect. Lee was known to be possessive and jealous, often accusing Olivier of infidelity without basis. Her insecurities fueled many heated arguments between the couple, making their home life far from peaceful. Lee also had a reputation for being snobbish and elitist. She often looked down on people she considered to be 
below her, whether in terms of social status or talent. This attitude didn't win her many friends in Hollywood, a place where egos are already inflated and tensions run high. Adding to her complicated personality was her struggle with bipolar disorder, which was not well understood at the time. While this condition likely contributed to her erratic behavior, it doesn't entirely excuse the way she treated people. Many who worked with her felt that she used her mental health struggles as a license to mistreat others. Cary Grant He had a public persona that was almost too good to be true, and in many ways, it was. While he dazzled audiences with his good looks and effortless charisma, those who knew him personally were often subjected to a different side of him, a side that was far from charming. Grant was known for his controlling tendencies, especially in his romantic relationships. His marriage to actress Diane Cannon serves as a prime example. According to Cannon, Grant was emotionally abusive and tried to control every aspect of her life, from what she wore to who she talked to. His controlling behavior was so severe that it led to the end of their marriage and left emotional scars that took years to heal. His colleagues didn't escape his difficult personality either. During the filming of His Girl Friday, it said that he demanded to be filmed from specific angles to showcase his good side, much to the annoyance of the crew and even the director, Howard Hawks. His vanity was well known in the industry, and he wasn't above making life difficult for others to maintain his image. Grant was also known for his frugality, which often bordered on stinginess. Despite being one of the highest paid actors of his time, he was notorious for avoiding picking up the check at dinners and even charged fans for autographs. This behavior was in stark contrast to the generous and affable image he portrayed on screen. Moreover, Grant had a complicated relationship with his own identity. Born Archibald Leach in Bristol, England, he went to great lengths to distance himself from his working-class background, including changing his accent and even his name. Those who reminded him of his past or questioned his carefully crafted image were met with hostility. While Cary Grant's on-screen persona made him a Hollywood legend, his off-screen behavior revealed a complex and often difficult man. His story serves as a cautionary tale that behind the most charming smiles can lie a host of insecurities and dark tendencies. Frank Sinatra also known as Old Blue Eyes, was a titan in the entertainment industry. With a career spanning six decades, he left an indelible mark on music, film, and television. However, Sinatra was not just known for his velvety voice and charismatic stage presence. He was also infamous for his volatile temper and sometimes abrasive behavior. One of the most talked about aspects of Sinatra's personality was his association with the Rat Pack, a group of entertainers known for their hard-partying lifestyle. While the Rat Pack's antics were often seen as charming, Sinatra's role as the unofficial leader sometimes took a darker turn. He was known to be controlling and would often berate members who didn't toe the line, leading to strained relationships within the group. Sinatra's temper wasn't just reserved for his friends. It extended to his professional life as well. He was notorious for clashing with directors, producers, and even fellow actors. During the filming of From Here to Eternity, it's said that he got into heated arguments with the director, Fred Zinnemann, demanding that scenes be shot his way. His behavior was considered so problematic that many studios were hesitant to work with him, despite his immense talent. His relationships with women were also a point of contention. Sinatra was married four times, and his affairs were numerous. His marriage to Ava Gardner was particularly tumultuous, marked by explosive arguments and alleged infidelity on both sides. Sinatra's treatment of women in his life often raised eyebrows, as he was known to be possessive and jealous, traits that didn't sit well with many. But perhaps the most controversial aspect of Sinatra's life was his alleged ties to organized crime. While never proven, these connections have been widely reported and discussed adding a layer of menace to his already complex personality. His friendships with figures known to be involved in criminal activities did little to dispel these rumors. In public settings, Sinatra was known to lose his temper with fans and even journalists. There are numerous accounts of him lashing out at people who he felt had crossed a line, whether it was a fan approaching him at an inopportune moment or a journalist asking a question he didn't like. 
Despite these flaws, Sinatra's contributions to music and film are undeniable. He remains an icon, but like many icons, his legacy is a complicated one, filled with moments of brilliance and instances of behavior that were less than admirable. In the end, Sinatra was a man of contrasts, capable of immense kindness but also prone to bouts of anger and pettiness, making him a fascinating, if flawed, figure in the annals of entertainment history.